NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory recently detected a massive plasma tornado, 14 times larger than Earth, swirling around the sun's north pole. This incredible storm astonished scientists as the sun was showered with moon-sized globules of incandescent material. This cataclysmic event surpassed anything witnessed on Earth, and its effects are causing concern. The tornado developed over three days, reaching a height of approximately 111,000 miles, 178,000 kilometers, or the equivalent of 14 Earths. Unlike traditional tornadoes, this phenomenon is formed by the sun's powerful magnetic fields, converging to create intense rotating structures. Considerably more terrifying than the tornado they silently control, this is a really huge scale that we are dealing with it is the most recent in a string of astounding occurrences on the sun as our star approaches the culmination of its 11-year solar cycle. Only the portion of the explosion that is visible is the tornado the tornado was actually created by a magnetic structure that is much larger than what we can now observe the sun is a sizable ball of plasma and boiling gas made up of extremely hot charged particles these generate magnetic fields as they orbit the sun which erupts through the solar surface a few of these massive magnetic fields are fixed to the surface at numerous spots and extending an arc into space these points are referred to as prominences or filaments fortunately the planet dwarfing tornado has spared our planet from its destructive might although it is 14 earths tall our planet is around 11700 Earths from the Sun and its course is far from Earthbound more so a few astute amateur astronomers were able to confirm Stowe's findings with some of the most breathtaking views of the enormous vortex ever captured solar tornadoes are another example of spots that tie this intangible magnetic field to the Sun in addition to prominences and filaments the filaments eventually decay away or erupt into space charge particles were launched away from the Sun in this tornado's case when the filaments split apart hurtling across space at incredible speeds there might be an increase in auroras or problems with power systems if it were moving closer to earth however since our planet was off course there is little possibility of that happening here solar tornadoes may not actually spin in contrast to our own tornadoes even though the word tornado implies the structure spins this may not be the case basically you have two options either there is a magnetic field supported structure that is actually rotating or what is being observed is hot plasma that is following a pre-twisted magnetic field and gives the impression that it is rotating but is actually moving up and down in the direction of a slight spiral according to one notion if there is actual rotation within the structure this might set off or destabilize the entire structure and lead to an eruption the incident was a breathtaking display but it won't have an adverse effect on earth we're likely to witness more impressive solar occurrences in the years to come as the sun approaches its solar maximum. A peak in activity that occurs roughly every 11 years over the last few days. The sun has been fairly productive the six sunspots darker cooler regions of intense magnetic fields that are currently visible on the star's disk were defined as moderate activity by the UK Space Weather Forecaster Met Office. In the coming days the gray latest of these areas which is situated close to the sun's southeastern border might produce solar flares and plasma explosions that could have an impact on Earth's space weather additionally there are two coronal holes or openings in the magnetic field of the Sun that are currently ejecting a lot of fast solar wind from the Sun's upper atmosphere corona when this stream of magnetized gas interacts with the magnetic field of Earth in the next few days it may cause geomagnetic storms even though the Met office only predicts a moderate G1 geomagnetic storm it may be sufficient to boost aurora displays at higher latitudes our sun is essentially a light bulb that produces light by employing the elements it is generated on its surface as resistance there was no optical light produced when the sun originally formed since there was no resistance all of it was gamma rays Hork plasma not fusion is what makes up the core of our sun the matter and space that make up this plasma operate as the infinitely powerful catalyst that the universe is most most effective reaction Thought to have the strong interaction between quarks and space is able to be overcome to keep quarks apart indefinitely after they have been sufficiently distanced from a reaction. Instead, the sheer density and pressure of space are able to maintain this separation eternally a field of sterile. Electron neutrinos operating at absolute zero pressure keeps the reaction running. The actual energy of the universe exists in this field gravity and every other form of energy. We are aware of alter this field, but in the end space, ultimately triumphs the second law. Thermodynamics and the actual point of absolute zero are located there quarks, and neutrinos were taken by our sun, who then started fusing them there as a 
the sun undergoes a process where it produces its first neutrons and optically detectable light, leading to the formation of ring stars. As neutrons gather on the surface, hydrogen begins to form, and through continuous neutron generation and the beta minus decay mechanism, the first helium is produced. This fusion process is unique to our universe. The star darkens due to beta minus decay, creating heavier components until a surface is formed, extinguishing the light. Over billions of years an atmosphere develops. The sun acts as a catalytic converter, producing various elements, including liquid iron. Gamma rays from the quark plasma core bombard the sun's surface, causing battles and energy exchanges. Gamma ray bursts occur as a result. The so-called Big Bang was our cosmos transforming into a particle colliter, emitting quark plasma fragments that form galaxies. Each galaxy has unique characteristics due to the different shapes that quark plasma can take. The expansion of galaxies is propelled by the collision energy, not gravity. This theory offers explanations for various sun-related phenomena. The sun has been exhibiting increased activity with the formation of several coronal holes, including one estimated to be 30 times the size of Earth. These coronal holes are directing solar winds toward Earth, which have already begun to reach us. Scientists are puzzled by these unusual events, including the recent observation of a piece of the sun's surface circling its north pole like a massive polar vortex. This phenomenon has never been seen before, and it has significant implications for understanding the dynamics of the sun's atmosphere above 55 degrees latitude. Scott McIntosh, a solar physicist, noted that strange occurrences typically happen in the sun's 55-degree latitudes once every solar cycle. These cycles, which last around 11 years, involve variations in solar activity such as radiation, material ejections, sunspots, and flares. While previous hedgerows, structures in solar plasma, have been observed, they have never generated a polar whirlwind like this recent one. The specific cause of this phenomenon is unknown, but scientists speculate that it may be related to the reversal of the sun's magnetic field, with the polar region playing a significant role. Maxintosh discovered a magnetic field phenomenon that occurs once per solar cycle around 55 degrees latitude and moves towards the solar poles. Scientists are intrigued by its behavior as it disappears at the pole and reappears in the same place three or four years later. However, studying the sun from the ecliptic plane limits direct examination. The European Space Agency's Solar Orbiter mission provides some insights and hints about the origin of solar magnetic switchbacks, which may accelerate the solar wind. Previous spacecraft data only allowed measurements at specific points, making it challenging to determine the structure and shape of these switchbacks. However, NASA's Parker Solar Probe has observed a sharp increase in the number of switchbacks, suggesting they occur more frequently near the Sun and may be caused by magnetic field kinks shaped like an S solar physicist are closer to understanding how switchbacks contribute to the driving and heating of the solar wind. If you enjoyed this episode of Voyager, be sure to watch more captivating videos about space.